make, say I've sketched out the picture already based more or less on the tonal sketch. I've done it a little bit heavier with the pencil than I normally would and that's so you can see it a little bit easier on camera. There's four colours I'm going to be using here. We're going to be using Thalo Blue, Permanent Rose, Burnt Umber and obviously being a beach scene we'll be using a fair amount of raw sienna in the picture. Oh and I'm just going to use one brush and that's a number 10 round brush. So the first thing I'm going to do to get that sort of hit and miss effect with the clouds is to put in a little bit of water. Again I've just added a very tiny spot of phthalo blue just so you can see a hint of it. I'm now just going to pull in a reasonably strong mix of that phthalo blue but when I mix it with the the water that's already on the uh, sheet you can see by streaking it like that and getting that nice hit and miss effect here and there it gets those an impression of those nice breezy blowy clouds. Now I'm just going to very quickly I'm just going to bring in a little bit of phthalo blue with the permanent rose like that just to warm it up a little bit and it'll just give a little bit of hint of some clouds and cloud shadows. I'm just softening that off as you can see and just bringing it down before it dries too quickly. Now I'm just going to put in a little bit of raw sienna. I don't want to go near the blue because if it mixes together it'll end up as, uh, as a C6 sky. Now I've mixed a little touch of the phthalo blue with the permanent rose here and I've grayed it down by adding a little touch of the raw sienna as well. Now there's an important area there against the front of the rock face. Now what I'm going to do is just blot it slightly like that and that immediately adds more distance to it because the, the colour becomes a little bit paler. And we've got a nice little streak of light coloured raw sienna here which looks like the sun is maybe just catching that part of the cliff face. Right, I'm mixing up now a base colour that we're going to put into this main cliff area here. So we put a bit more raw sienna in it, plenty of raw sienna. Now I'm just going to streak this down like that. I'm just almost, you can see I'm almost flicking with the brush because that gives a, the old hit and miss effect. Just for a bit of a diversion, I'm just dropping in now a little streak of uh, phthalo blue. Look, I'm putting that quite dark brown on. It actually looks a lot darker brown on the screen than it does on the picture. That's what's called dropping in. You're just touching the slightly damp surface and the paint runs in and spreads. Right, I've just added a bit of a darker colour around the back of the rocks here. Not all the way around, just at this front edge here, because I know later on that these rocks, or this area of these rocks, is going to be catching the light. So I want these to be fairly light. So um, if you like planning ahead by putting in a slightly dark colour. Right now while the cliff's drying off I'm just putting in a little bit of clean paint, clean water rather into the rocks over here. But what I want to do now is just take a neat amount of raw sienna you can see like that and that'll just spread its way through the rocks and particularly in this area here there might be some hard edges here and there. Well that's fine because these, these are sort of fairly jaggedy rocks so we need to reflect that in some of the uh, light and dark parts of them. Right now I've got this mix of permanent rose and phthalo blue for the sea and you can see it's quite a watery wash this because I only want a light area for the sea. I don't want uh, to make it too dark but what I'm doing you can see I'm pressing on the brush and Hopefully you can see that the brush, even though that we've got the round brush, I've actually flattened it out almost like a chisel. And the reason I'm doing that is to give ourselves an opportunity to make some nice flat distant waves. We don't want big breakers crashing over the rocks in this picture, we'll look at that in a later DVD. Right now what I've done is got two mixes prepared. One is raw sienna with a little bit of burnt umber in it just to bring it down. It would be a little bit bright yellow if we put it on neat uh, to represent the beach. And the second colour is a very watery mix of phthalo blue and the merest touch, the merest touch of uh, permanent rose in it just to reflect 
the sky colour and you'll see why we, we need those to be ready before we start because what we're going to do is to put the beach in here in the raw sienna and burnt umber mix and then I'm just going to bring a little bit of the water which is really no more than reflecting the sky in from this area here so that the two colours blend rather than mix together they just sort of blend and you have a transition hopefully from the blue to the raw sienna we'll see how that goes bringing in that watery mix of phthalo blue to start with just like that and if it hits and misses the beach like that so much the better you can imagine the the, the tide coming in like that and just rippling round the base of those rocks now before that has a chance to dry what I'm going to do is bring in a slightly stronger colour or a stronger mix and drag that in certainly underneath the the rocks but drag that into the blue like that now you can see we're dragging that quickly into the blue area so it has a chance to blend right just need to tease that edge so we can run that away up the beach and towards the water like that and you can see that we've created that nice blended effect as I wanted now the reason that I came in with the phthalo blue first and then putting the thicker wash on the heavier a stronger more pigmented wash of raw sienna and burnt umber it meant that that flowed over and blended with the phthalo blue without creating runbacks if I'd have put this thick wash in first and then brought the watery phthalo blue by now we'd have a whole series of cauliflowers all around this area here that well you wouldn't know what to do with right now you can see what I've done here is just to drop in a few little dark patches here and there of burnt umber with a little tiny touch of phthalo blue and just really dark just almost neat phthalo blue there because that's the darkest part of the um, of the rocks at the base of the rocks right just going to take a few little bits out where I think they might just be running a little bit too far or more accurately probably when I've painted them not quite right and we're going to let that dry now right now you can see I'm painting in these the shadowed rock dirt rock areas in a pretty loose way 